Hey guys, today we are going to talk about judge promos, how to get them, what they are actually worth, and whether or not economically it is worth it to be a judge. Now, being a judge, most people like it because it's part of the community, you can have a lot of fun, you can make a lot of friends who are judges and non-judges. It's overall a good community experience, but today we will look at it from a value perspective. So judges do not get paid. I don't know if this is true for pro tour judges. I believe they must get some type of stipend because our room and meals, it would be surprising to me at that level or even at the GP level for someone to travel to a event and only get paid using this packet of cards because the packet honestly is around 250, maybe $300 if you're really lucky. The packet consists of Defense of the Heart, Azura the Enchanter, Mystic Confluence, Imperial Seal. So if you're just like a judge at FNM and you do maybe GPTs, then this packet looks really good for your time. But if you're traveling and you have to pay hotel, airfare, I would expect that to be covered by Wizard of the Coast. I'm not a judge, maybe a judge can let me know in the comments below, a judge who's went to a pro tour, do they actually comp you for that as well as meals? And hopefully give you some type of stipend that is not magic cards. One of the issues that I want to talk about is the judges, the previous judges have sued Wizards of the Coast uh, because Wizards of the Coast, uh, there was a lawsuit due to the judges not being compensated and treated unfairly when in a judge group, a bunch of the cards were spoiled and they essentially went ham on all the judges that were in that particular group that participated and they were no longer allowed to be judges. But anyway, this is how judges get paid, quote unquote. Uh, they cannot get paid for legal reasons uh, and they're not employees or vendors of Wizards of the Coast, but they receive volunteer packets, I guess. So this one is Mystic Confluence, $31. Let's be generous and say it's $32. And in Europe, it's $14. I did get a comment that euros, the exchange rate is correct, but it's not a two to one exchange rate. Uh, it's probably less than that. Actually, surprisingly, I go to Ireland. Uh, Google is headquartered in Ireland and they use a euro which is kind of silly because the first time I went, I changed it into Dublin, uh, whatever. Um, so Dublin, Ireland uses the Euro. I think the rest of Ireland uses something else. But anyway, it's interesting side note. So Mystic Confluence, not the most pricey card. Let's just say $20 that you can probably buy list this in a pot packet. Really fun, these cards are meant really to be EDH casual friendly. Uh, to give judges something that is unique as well as uh, show appreciation for what they are doing. Uh, they're taking maybe sometimes entire days, depending on the pre-release, to work for quote unquote no money, right? They're vol volunteering their time. Uh, instead of playing at the pre-release, which is, I imagine, much more fun, they volunteer to judge at it. Uh, some stores compensate, some stores do not compensate. My local game store does not compensate for the judges because uh, they are just employees and the employees are expected or encouraged to take the judge exam. So they're just paid their regular rate, even if they have to give up a Saturday or, sun or Friday night, you know, that kind of weird midnight time that most employees are not going to want to work at. The next one is Zura the Enchanter which is also about $30. Uh, Europe is exactly almost the same price. Uh, pretty cool. One of the interesting things about judge promos is they have unique art, but the show and tell judge art was actually the art in the reprint conspiracy too. So the question is, will they keep the art unique? And then the answer to that is no. They can either use the same art from the original artwork, therefore the art on the judge promo is not unique to begin with, or they can use the judge artwork on a later edition, a, a reprint like Show and Tell. Overall, 
the average now, I don't know how many hours the average judge will work, but the average packet is always around the same value. In this case, you have Imperial Seal. That means the other free cards in the packet have to be less valuable. That's just how it works. Uh, and the overall value of the packet would probably be around 300 to $400 retail. You can probably get 250 at buy list if you just turn in your packet. So $250 for a multi-day event is probably not the best expected value. Assuming you can make $10 an hour and an event is 12 to 14 hours a GP, then even if you're comped for hotel and you're comped for food and you're comped for travel, you pretty much just made $10 an hour if you're lucky. Well, assuming you work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you don't even make $10 an hour. So you really are doing it out of the love of the game. So show some appreciation to the judges. Um, moving on, how do you get these promos? And these promos largely go in the hands of either the players who will keep them and take them as a token. It's really a token of appreciation from Wizards of the Coast for quote unquote voluntary. Or, so they'll just go straight to their EDH decks, or they will sell them in packets to DGP vendors. Now, it is quite possible that vendors, that you can trade for them at these events, but normally I feel like there is always a good buy list value on these, and the, all the judges know who has the highest, which vendor has the highest buy list at the event, and they take it and they get cash. Because cash, let's be honest here, cash is extremely valuable if you are a Magic player at an event. Uh, cash pretty much means, like, events are very expensive. Uh, events, you know, hotel, and I tried to stay in Houston for events. Comic Palooza was a terrible event, but I was in Houston, so I went to it. Ret Retro Palooza, I didn't wake up, I totally forgot about that event. There was another event, that one of my fake, uh, favorite, ah, uh, I almost said fake stores. <laughs> Meaning about fake news and stuff um at my local uh comic book store i guess or art store i guess it's like an art like modern art store and i missed that event i've just been missing a lot of events i don't know what's going on but i haven't scheduled in my calendar anyway the next card is defense of the heart and this is the cheapest promo at twenty dollars so you have a $20 promo, $30, $30, you have $80 of promos in retail, quote unquote retail, but you're not gonna get retail prices for them because this is what on average they can sell for waiting and the store takes the brunt of the cash flow. So when you look at $30, $30, $20, it might not be that attractive for you to go to your larger GP event or for you to become a judge if you're only concerned about money. I've always said this, if you're concerned about money, then don't be a magic, don't do magic content. Don't do magic, be a magic pro. Do League of Legends. Like you can make a ton of money on League of Legends if you're good or if you create interesting content or if you are a broadcaster or you even have or in a team. League of Legends, the pros get played by, they get paid by the people who make the game. Riot Games gives them all a minimal salary. And then of course you get a more salary from the actual organization, which is funded by investors. Like, can you imagine that concept of Magic Pro teams funded by investors like the 76ers, Rick Fox from the Los Angeles Lakers, or, uh, and then they're sponsored by like Geico and stuff. That's esports. Magic will, I'm going to predict something interesting. Magic in 2017 will either be an esport or it will never be an esport. You cannot wait because it's already Hearthstone, Overwatch. League of Legends, Dota, CSGO. You have way too much fighting games that I don't even know of. And, I, and that's just the ones I watch on Twitch. I'm sure there's many more that may smash. They will only get bigger, right? So it's more competitive market. So now the next one we will take is Imperial Seal, $170. Let's call it 250 even. This particular batch is less valuable than other batches. In time, it will probably reach $300 retail, 
But as of now, I would expect the buy list to be around 170, 180. They are highly liquid. I like since they are, you know, I you actually get them in a packet, so supposedly they're near mint, so you don't need to worry about the conditioning. And overall, I feel like you can find players in your local game store. It's not going to be that hard to move for a store. But for an individual to move these it might be a lot harder. So you're paying a judge $170 or you're, volu you're appreciating the judge $170 for a GP event. Uh, pretty good. I mean, it's okay if you like enjoy the event. Now let's talk about some of the pricier ones. Geyer's Cradle, Geyer's Cradle, 650 Ellis Norm. You might be like, hmm, why is Ellis Norm so expensive? It has a beautiful Frexian artwork. It's unique. It's absolutely unique. If you do want an Ellis Norm, this is the one to get because it looks amazing. Force of Will. Again, one of the most, I believe the artwork is being used in, or it was, it came from Eternal Masters on Magic Online. Beautiful artwork. Demonic Tutor. I remember when they put in 40 Demonic Tutors and the Hellvolt in one store. Can you imagine that? 40 times what? Let's round it to 300 because why not? $12,000 and a Hellvolt. Crazy, right? Then you have Survival of the Fittest, which is a beautiful artwork. I actually, now I'm looking at the list of cards, I, I believe it's pretty much due to artwork, right? You have Ellis Norm and Force of Will having better artwork. Demonic Tutor has a unique artwork as well. I don't personally like it. Survival of the Fittest is a gorgeous artwork. And then all the way down, you have Mana Drain, Imperial Seal, Wheel of Fortune, Port, Island, uh, so you know, the judges also received a packet of five land, and let's say the five land on average was like a hundred bucks. That's like five hundred dollars for every judge. Not bad, right? Not bad. Uh, some of the ones that are not good. Degree of justice is fifteen. Riku is sixteen, and tomb is twenty. Morphling is twenty. Uh, Karmat Karmatic guide, Karmic guide is wow. It's twenty. Balance is 20. So you do have the opportunity to buy a lot of these cheaply online if you do like the card. And some of them might spike in price. It's just I would pay more attention to artwork on these type of things. Do you actually have a preference to the artwork? Anyway, that is it. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye, guys.